Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. Today you join us on a water that's completely new to me and this is part of our sort of sessions uh, series that we started probably around early, early part of last year. In all fairness, not been out on the bank a great deal, so this is probably the first first time being out this this year fishing a natural venue. So I've sort of stuck to what I know generally, and I'm trying to apply to this new venue stuff that I've done on previous venues, say sort of place like Shelf Dam and various other places like that. So in terms of the lake there that we're fishing, as you can see, it's a lovely little spot. It's actually Reedsmere Pond, um, just outside Murfield, and it's on the Murfield Book. As you can see, it's reed lines, it's a really sort of um, quaint place, lots of trees, lots of features. And apart from that, I don't really know much about the place, to be honest. I've had a plumb around earlier and tried to find what the sort of late bed layout is and try and have a, a bit of a guess at what's in there. So what I've done, to be fair today, is just stuck with sort of natural baits and nice light rigs just to try and get bites and suss the peg out. Um, in terms of where we're fishing on the actual lake, we're probably about halfway up it. Um, and it's actually a lot deeper than I thought it'd be as well. Initially I thought it might be four or five foot deep, but as it turns out, we've got pretty much 11 feet on a top four. So with that in mind, what I've decided to do today is fish one line. Um, I initially started on a waggler as well, just for an hour after I fed my ground bait line, just to see what, what happened and we didn't get any bites on that. Um, but I've gone onto the, the ground bait line and I've actually had a couple of fish already. So I'll run you through what I'm doing. I've got three rigs set up and they're all really nice and light. All the main lines are 010 and all the hook lengths are 075 suplex fluorocarbon. Again, it's a hook length that you see me use on all the canals and whenever I'm fishing really like that's what I go for. Hooks are all 20s or 22s, big 511s. And then the, the only variation is in the actual shotting and style of the rigs. So as you can see, we've got plenty of depth here. And on one of the rigs, all of them I've got, well, on this lightest rig, I've got a number four single elastic. And on the other two, I've got a number six. And I've gone for different float patterns just to offer different presentations over the ground bait line. So the first float is nice long fibre br fiber bristle, it's one of the sensors patterns, um, wire stem, but it's quite a slim pattern and this is for mainly fishing through the water. So I've got a bulk about two thirds depth and then I've just got strung 11s down to a couple of number 12s above the five inch hook length there. So as you can see it's a really nice light rig so it's basically fishing through the water from about four foot off bottom, something like that, four or five foot. So the idea with this is just to make sure that we can get bites and also try and work out whereabouts the fish are over the ground bait. It's a fantastic rig for sussing out whether the fish are actually feeding over your ground bait or whether they're actually sitting off bottom. So that's why I always set this rig up and that's the one I'll always start on. The other two rigs are just variations on the same. So I'll just show you one of them. This is a, a gram float, again it's a sensor pattern but as you can see it's a much more traditional rugby ball shape and this will be fished with a bulk and just a few droppers. Again you can see I've got nice long lines above all the floats with double two number eight back shot. Um, again that's because of the amount of surface skin we've got seeing across wind so that really helps control the float. You can see we've got a bulk and in this case we've got about, what would that be? Five droppers there, all number 11s, down to the same hook length again, but a 20s B511 in this case, and a number six elastic in the top. A slightly more powerful elastic just to strike through that more, more round bodied float. A light elastic, you're not gonna strike through it quite as easily, especially in this step. So that's one of the rigs. And then the second, the, the other one is just a gram and a half variation on the same one with the bulk set about 10 inches further down and just three or four droppers. That'll be fished two inches over depth. This one's dead depth. And the other rig that we're going to start on is about an inch under. So those are the rigs, like I say, dead simple and just give me different variations in how to present the bait. Again, the wind's been changeable today, so that's why I've covered quite a few different sizes of float from 0.8 of a gram up to the gram and then a gram and a half. So I can, I can basically fish in any conditions. In terms of the bait that I've got today, I've just mixed up a really nice sort of pretty much traditional winter roach mix. Again, this is more just to err on the side of caution because I don't really know what I'm I'm fishing for here today, so I can catch a bit of everything on this. If I was putting fish meal in, again, I'd risk knackering the peg. So the mix is equal parts, a third each, of uh, Frenzied MC Black, Super Canal Black, and also Census Magic Black. So the magic's in there just to create a little bit more binding property and also for a bit of sweetness in case there's a few skimmers in the peg. But with the uh, the Frenzied MC Black and the Super Canal Black, it creates a really nice fine mix that's really sort of traditional for roach. In there, I've just got a variety of baits. So I've got a few casters, some hemp seed, some dead pinkies, some dead red maggots, and a few live pinkies. As you can see, those are just scattered loosely in there. The main, main stuff I've got in there is the hemp seed, just to make sure I've created a bed of bait. At the start of the session, I've fed three balls of that. 
all at 13 metres down the same hole. I've had one that's really rock hard to make sure it breaks down slowly, one that's about medium and then one that was squeezed really nice and lightly to create a nice sort of open cloud and a bed of bait. Again, putting a few loose maggots in with it and a few loose pinkies just to try and draw fish into the peg. So it's taken about sort of an hour, hour and a half for us to get a few bites, but eventually the peg started to establish itself. So we'll get out there fishing now and show you what, we, what we're doing, rotating the hook baits and hopefully try and put a few fish in the net. Right, so we're going to have a chuck in now. What I'm going to do is just sort of start how I started the session initially. Like I say, we've already had a few fish because we've been fishing for about an hour and a half since we put the bait in. Um, but I'm going to run you through how I started the session. So initially, I started on the lightest rig with double pinky on the hook. The reason why I've done that is to get the slowest fall of bait as I can. Double pinky will fall slower, surprisingly, than, than a, a single pinky. So on a strung out rig like this, especially when you're fishing sort of a, an active roach mix, it'll tell you if the fish are sort of two, three, four foot off bottom, just looking over the feed, or whether you'll be able to basically read the float right down till the, the second that those pinkies touch bottom. So you know if the fish are, are feeding over your ground bait, you'll get bites as soon as the, the pinkies touch bottom, whereas if they're just sitting over and not really feeding aggressively, that's when you'll catch, catch fish off bottom. And what's happened, to be fair, the session today has gone quite well to plan. I've started catching sort of just off bottom, well, about sort of two foot off bottom as the fish have come into the peg and sat over the active mix. And then as the session's gone on, I've started catching fish when the bait's actually settled fully on the bottom and I'm not getting anywhere near as many indications now as the bait's falling, which is telling me that the roach are feeding and they're actually picking out items of food from the ground bait. And what that's given me the option to do, because I've got a, a selection of baits in the ground baits, say casters, dead maggots, um, dead pinkies, that sort of thing, I know that they're actually eating out of the ground bait, picking up the casters, picking up the maggots, so I've been able then to rotate hook baits, because I know that they're actually feeding on what's in the ground bait. And what I've been able to do is I've had a couple of fish where they've been a slightly better stamp because of that, so I've switched from some from double pinky to single red maggot. I had a couple of better fish doing that, so a better stamp than there was on the pinky. And I've switched to the caster and had a couple of a better stamp roach again. And that's one of the things why I've I've gone down that route today, fishing sort of a method and fishing baits that are, and rigs that I know really well for natural venues on this new venue today because I've been able to to suss out how the fish are feeding and sort of work out what's in the peg. Again, there's a bit of a, a skimming wind on it today, so that's gonna make things a little bit more difficult. Oh, that was a bite there. And in that case, the, the bait had been settled for a good sort of 20, 30 seconds there. And then the float's just gone under. So again, because I'm quite confident now, the fish are feeding now, and I like to think I've, I've sort of sussed out exactly how the roach are going to take it now. All I need to really look at is when to top up. I know that the rigs are working fine, the bait presentation's right and the actual choice of baits from where I fed's right because I'm getting quite a few bites or I have been so far. So it's just a case of making sure that I, I get it right when it comes to topping up. There we go, there's a bite and a fish on straight away. suddenly start fighting a lot harder as this. I think it might have me in some weed. That's a better roach. It's probably the best roach of the session so far is that one and that was on the double pinky. As you can see, mint condition fish that. And that took it when the bait had been settled on the bottom. And they've all been really lightly hooked as well today. And I think that a lot of that's down to the clarity of the water. See, lovely fish, probably about two or three ounces that one. 
blocks in because that's on the, the really light rig with double pinky but it's it's settled i can be confident that if i go into a heavier rig and bomb a bait down that the fish are, are actually looking and feeding off the bottom so i can or directly off the ground bait on the bottom so i could probably get away now with going to the heavier rig and fishing sort of a bait nail to the deck but what i'm actually going to do is just try a single red maggot and sort of like i say go through what i was doing in the initial part of the session just adjust the shot in again and we'll see if that brings a bigger fish again i'm starting to think already about what i'm going to do regarding topping up and i think because we're probably about an hour and a half into the session i've fed three balls what i'm going to do is, is pretty much fish this out and see if the stamp of roach gets bigger because that can quite often be the case initially it'll be, it'll be the smaller roach that come into the peg because they're starting to feed on the active like bits of say hemp seed that are coming off the active ground bait and then the bigger roach will come in and start to feed directly off the bottom and pick out sort of the casters and the hemp and stuff like that so what i don't want to do is top up when those bigger roach are already in the peg feeding i want to be able to catch them and then sort of let them move out of the peg and put in another small ball of ground bait to draw them back in there's a bite and another fish on actually a smaller roach this time on the maggot again every single fish that we've caught so far today has been in mint condition so I think what we'll do now is try on the caster and this is this why it pays to vary what you actually feed in your ground bait as well if they do start picking up out the items of feed from there you can start to vary it on the hook and hopefully sort out some bigger fish again because it's not a venue that i know really well this i don't know how big the roach go or if there's much variance in the size but i'm sure we'll find out as the session progresses another thing as well that i've not mentioned yet is when i started the session because I know the water's clear and I thought these fish could be quite finicky, what I started doing is actually fishing around the feed. So I'd probably 40, 45 minutes, something like that on the waggler, just to let the ground bait break up and settle. Then when I did pick up the pole rigs, I started going around the edges of the feed, just seeing if there were one or two fish feeding because I tried initially over the ground bait, didn't get a bite, a bite for about five, 10 minutes. So I, well, I didn't get a bite at all. So then I moved about sort of two, two, three meters to the left of the feed and had a fish straight away. And again, that's when they, they come in to have a look at the bait, but they've not settled and started feeding confidently. So you can pick off one or two early fish by doing that. And often as well, towards the back end of the session, you might catch the bigger fish just off the side of your feed or just adding a half extension and going past. That brings on something as well that's really important, especially on a new venue like this. I've had a really good plumb around from sort of five metres right out to 13, 13 and a half metres. And I'm making sure whenever I'm feeding a line like this, that I'll put on a half extension and just go a little bit further past and just plumb up to make sure it's not sloping away from me. Because if it is, then you want to feed a little bit shorter. And equally, at least if you know if it's dead flat, then that by adding a half extension, you can just fish past your feed and you don't have to alter the depth on your rigs. And again, that's another useful little way of, of catching the bigger fish, especially on natural venues like this, where they can be quite wary and the water's quite clear. So at the moment, I'm just fishing probably two feet to the left of where the bait's initially gone in. And then what I'll do, especially if I'm not getting bites, I'll work that bait around the, the feed area and just see where the fish are sitting. There we go, that was a bite. That cast is fine to go for another. Again, if I'm missing a lot of bites, that's when a more positive wriggle will catch me more fish as well. So I'm not too fussed if I'm missing a few bites on this. And I'm confident that the fish, like I say, are in, are in sort of the bottom couple of feet of water and they're feeding over the ground bait. If I pick up a heavier rig, 
like I say, just a slightly bigger hook and slightly bigger droppers, I'm more likely to connect with those bikes because I'll see them a lot quicker. Again, if I'd have gone straight onto the heavy rig and started fishing over this line, I don't think I'd have had those first sort of 10, 15 fish early on. I know equally it'd have been very hard to assess where the fish are feeding then. So it's just something to think about is that. I say set us up a nice sort of light rig to work out where in the water column the fish are feeding. And it can be even more important, especially when the water's deep like it is here. Because if the sun comes out, it could turn, up, turn out to be the case that you're getting bites at six feet deep, even though you've ground baits on the bottom. In that case, that's when you want to put up a couple of shallow rigs and start loose feeding. Because fortunately today they've, they've actually stayed down and I think a lot of that's to do with the a little indication there. A lot of that's to do with a little bit of rain that we've had go in and I think it's just put the fish down which is perfect for, for what we're trying to do today. Just bumped that one off there, really steady bite. I think what we'll do, we'll just go back to the, the single maggot, try and catch one, one or two more fish and then we'll go on to the, the heavier rig, sort of the one gram rig, and try that with maggots and again a caster and see if that means that we're hitting more bites. What I'm trying to avoid doing today if I can is loose feeding because I've, I've seen the sun's come out and the air temperature's gone up a little bit and I think if I start loose feeding there's every chance that I can knacker my peg and bring the fish off bottom. Again, if at, at the start of the session, say I put the ground bait in and I hadn't had any bites at all, say for a, an hour, hour and a half, something like that, then I would actually start, about loop, start thinking about loose feeding. It's quite often when it's like that, you can use the noise of loose feeding to draw the fish into the general area and then cut out the loose feed and they will sit over your ground bait then. But fortunately, after about, four, let's say 40 minutes, 45 minutes, I've had the odd bite over the ground bait, which is telling me that they've come in and started to have, to have a look at it. But it can work on a lot of venues where you put the ground bait in, like I say, you don't catch for a couple of hours just to start loose feeding, create a bit of noise. It's biting a fish on again. So it's little things like that which gave me plenty of options today so I don't think I'd have got to the point where I'd, I'd sort of run out of options if you know what I mean. So I think what we'll do now we'll have a, a go on the heavier rig, the gram and a half rig. Clearly there's plenty of fish down there because we're getting bites really quickly after that, that bulk settled and the, the hook bait's getting within about two feet of the bottom. So I'll put on a more positive rig now and see if that makes a difference. Again, it'll also speed up the catch rate if, if it turns out to be effective. So I'll be able to bomb the bait to the bottom a lot quicker. So and because that last fish was on a single red maggot, I'll put a single red on this time. I don't think it'd be long before we get onto the, the heavier rig and start trying with sort of baits like double caster. A couple of other little tips as well that I've done today in terms of the way I've actually set up set out my stall and the way I've set up my gear. Because I'm having to fish pretty much straight in front of me and the, the restriction with the pull rollers behind me is quite severe as well. Is I've actually, well I've plumbed up, I've made sure I've gone a bit to the right so when I'm striking I can lift the pull over to the left to maintain a tight line before I start shipping back. And that can be really important because it'd be quite easy to do. I've got a much better far bank marker to, well, that was a bit of an indication then the fish to directly in front of me but if I'm striking and lifting and then shipping back immediately then I'll have a, a point where the line will go slack so I've just gone a bit further to the right and made sure the area is clear to fish in just put a bit of bristle grease on this one and it makes sure that I'm not losing fish when I'm shipping back so much I 
Right, so there's another fish on now on that one gram rig. Again, this one has just come to a single red maggot and it's, again, doesn't feel like a massive fish, this. I've had to wait a little bit longer for that bite as well. It's not a bad roach, we'll net him. So I think if the, the stamp of fish starts to drop from this, then I'll look to the top up, because it's we're probably about two and a half hours into the session now, just shy of. So I'm, I've just got to judge now how much of that bait is still going to be left on the bottom. Again, what you don't want to do is put more bait on the bottom if there's still quite a lot from the original feed. And it's a case that the fish have sort of backed off the feed. Because then you're just decreasing your options of them taking your hook bait. But if it's a case that they've, which I think is, is probably happened is they've eaten their way through quite a lot of it, I think a little top-up feed might work quite well. But we'll give it another couple of fish and see, see how things pan out. But I think, like I say, that's going to be my next move, is putting in a little sort of top-up ball of feed. Rich in sort of pinkies, a few dead maggots and a couple of casters. I think a little perch has just nicked that as I've been shipping out, funnily enough. That's a small roach. Just, just drop back in there. I'll replace that bait and try and get back out there. See, so initially as well, what I did, I did put in a, um, a line short with pinkies. Just untangle this rig about five metres, and I have plumbed up a, a rig for that with a really sort of light, strung out 4x10s rig. And if I start getting problems with roach and that taking the, the baits I'm shipping out, then I may well start loose feeding pinkies there again. Especially if it's a case of going onto that line as sort of a change to let my long line settle after I've topped up, that might well be a good way to go on this, on this lake. And if the fishing does become really good, what I might well do is go onto the, the even heavier rig and put on baits like sort of double maggot, double caster even, and see if there's any much bigger roach to be caught. And plenty of indications now. Again, a lot of these are coming as soon as the bait's, or pretty much just as it's settled. Which is what we're after. There we go, same again there. It's just dropped off as that one. I've put a bit of, bit of bristle grease on this float. And we've got quite a lot of um, sort of pollen and that sitting on the surface, which is affecting how the float's sitting at times. So every so often I'm just having to clean the, the bristle off and then put a little bit of bristle grease on, just on the tip to make sure it's sitting as low into the, into the water as it can do. Whenever you're roach fishing on anywhere where the, the water's clear like this, or it looks like it could be quite difficult fishing, Dotting your floats down to a pimple makes a massive difference and again can quite often mean that you catch the bigger roach. They're much more wary when it comes to taking your bait. So I'm doing when I'm swing, swinging the rig out as well, it's worth noting to make sure, because I've got quite a long string of droppers. So I'm swinging the, the rig out to the side to make sure that the maggot's just touching the water and I'll swing the bulk over the feed area and then drop the float in. And it just means twofold that the, the rig doesn't tangle, that was a bite then, and that the rig doesn't, and the rig sits as quickly as it can because your bulk is going directly beneath your float. So it's just something to consider is that. So as your bulk goes down, then you 
your droppers will take up and swing your hook bait directly over the feed. And plenty of little indications now. So maybe we'll even try the one and a half gram rig that I've got set up. There we go, another fish on. And we're not catching any massive fish today. It's a slightly better roach, that one. But the main thing is we're getting a bit of an idea of what's in front of us in terms of the layout of the lake and what also what baits we can get away with using. So if I ever come back here and I decide that I, I want to fish for, or just get a few bites, I can always just revert to this. But I do think it'd be interesting on here to try stuff like chopworm and castor and, uh, and bread as well. I mean, this peg's a little bit too deep for, for bread fishing at 13 metres, but just after that drop off at about five, six metres, could well be a good area for fishing bread. The other thing that's worth, worth noting as well, say for example, a venue like this, where you can see a lot of debris in the water before it hits that marginal shelf. Bread can be a fantastic bait because you can fish it off bottom. Whereas it wouldn't be a good idea to fish sort of ground bait and pinkies in that area. Right, so we've just hooked a better fish now, fishing shallow on pinkies. What I've decided to do is, rather than fishing the five metre line, I've used the same rig and cut it down a little bit and just fish, fished out at 10 metres, just so I can get away from the marginal weed. I've just been firing in pinkies and that looks to be the best roach of the day, that. Definitely is, lovely fish. Like I say, this is just while I'm resting the, um, the ground bait line. I noticed when I was loose feeding the pinkies that there's been a lot of fish swirling and one or two of a better stamp so I'll just quickly run you through the rig that I'm using because it's really it's like a proper canal rig is this one I've got the usual 20 B511 on the, the bottom five inches of 075 fluorocarbon so really nice and light when you're fishing for roach on in gin clear water like this and I've just got number 13 or number 7 styles, whatever the smallest size styles are, strung out up the rig. Got eight or nine of them on the 093 main line, which is really important, really nice and light when you're fishing shallow on these venues, because the fish will be able to see the line. And then I've just got a nice light Census Eric float. It's a 4 by 10s little wire stem just to make sure it cocks as soon as it goes in. But then because the, the wire stem's quite light, it'll just follow the, the shot through. And as you can see, a nice longish line to the uh, the pole tip with a number four elastic. And it's amazing when you're firing the pinkies in because they're so visible as well. I can see how few of them are making it to to sort of two, three feet under the water, and a lot of these fish are taking within the top sort of ten inches. So all I'm going to do is ship out. And what I want to do because it's the water's very clear and the fish are still quite cagey, so I'm going to fire in a decent decent amount of pinkies and then just gently flick the rig in and amongst it and hold it on a tight line and quite often with a rig like this there's a bite straight away there the fish will pretty much hook themselves especially when you're feeding lots of lots of bait like pinkies or squats because they're sort of darting in and out of the feed if you can maintain a tight line they will hook themselves eventually And the bites are lightning fast because the amount of fish in the, the area. What I've always got the option of doing is switching this to casters as well. But I think pink is initially probably the best bet just because the amount you can feed and the amount of disturbance you can make with them. And you can see the floats going every single time now. And that one almost hooked itself that time. Again, there's clearly a lot of roach in this lake. 
as long as you can present your bait well and, and disguise it in amongst the loose feed on a fairly light rig. I think that's the best way of going about getting bites here. I think I'll just, just change that hook bit. That pink is actually in fairly good condition. <laughs> yeah, should be fine for another fish, that. So again, just laying the rig in. Loose feed, good pouch of pinks, then just lay the rig straight back through it. Hold the rig on a tight line. There's small fish pulling at it all the time. Again, really surprising being that when I was fishing sort of five metres out, I missed that bite that time. Couldn't really get a bite loose feeding pinkies, but clearly just after the marginal weeds where you want to be for them. I definitely think if you're fishing one of the, the other pegs on here where you've got a bit more depth directly in front of you, whip fishing with pinkies could well do a decent bag of small roach probably. Again, today we've not really sussed out how to sort out the better fish, so that might be, be one for another day or I might just try feeding casters on this line. Again, pinkies are, all, are preferable in this case because it, they just fall that much slower through the water. There we go, that's a fish on now. Again, not a bad stamp, but not the same size we were catching over the ground bait lines. But if you can catch these quicker, they're worth targeting. Again, surprising that I've not had any perch on this line as well. So I thought with the, the amount of small roach that are coming up in the water, if there were any better perch, they might come up and have a look. But that's not happened as yet. Again, if I could get away with fishing shorter, then I would sort of fish five metres and I'd be able to, to lose feed by hand. As I've already said, because of the marginal weed, I can't get away with that. So again, just feeding sort of 15, 20 pinkies and then just laying the rigging across them. And the good thing is with pinkies, you can feed a lot of them and try and get a lot of activity going. And quite often if you do that, you can get a few better fish in your peg having a look. Well, that's another fish on now. Get another smallish roach. So if you could catch one of these every sort of 30 seconds a minute on a whip, you could really do a good weight out of here. I think it'll require a bit more, a bit more um, effort on this place to try and suss out to sort out the better, better fish, possibly the better roach or perch. Just try a red maggot on this time, just see if that makes a difference. There we go, that's a bite on the red maggot. Should 
be able to just swing him. Another nice roach, slightly bigger than the last one, that. I'm just in the top lip. Again, we're catching these a lot quicker than we were over the ground bait as well. Right, so I'm just going to ship out again now on single red maggot on this light rig and keep pinging these, these pinkies in. It's amazing how many bites we're getting now and I'm starting to think whether it's worth sort of carrying on with this till the end of the session, seeing what sort of weight we can put together and see if we can develop this line or whether it's worth going back on the ground bait. I suspect the ground bait line, I might well just leave that now. If any bubbles crop up, I might well go over it, but I know there's some bait there and I might try and push this line a little bit more possibly even start fishing with um, with casters. It's quite noticeable though, you do have to lay your rigging in amongst the loose feed that you're firing in to make sure you're getting bites. But at least it shows there's plenty of fish out there and if needs be you can catch shallow. Again, I thought they'd be quite reluctant to come under a pole tip, especially with the water being quite clear, but I think because we've got low light levels today, that might well, well be the case as to why they, they're happier to sit under the pole. There's another bite there. And I certainly think when the weather warms up and conditions improve, they'll become a lot less cagey and you will be able to catch really well shallow here. Missed another bite there, so I think what we'll do now is we'll crack on with this. See if we're hooking to anything bigger. Like I might say if we decide to make a change, go to casters or go back over the ground bait line, then we'll keep you updated. Right, so as you can see now, we've we've come off the shallow line, I've gone back out long for the last sort of what must be coming up to the last hour now. As you can see, the, the reason why I've got the bait brolling hat on and all that sort of stuff is because we've had a, some downpour of rain and that's sort of put a halt to the shallow fishing. I think it's put the fish down and as I said earlier, we were going to just give that shallow line sort of an hour or so so we could let the, the ground bait line settle. So we'll have a look over it now and see if we can get a bite. We've also seen a tent roll towards the far bank as well, so it'd be interesting to see if we hook one of those. I don't think we'd have much of a chance getting it on, on getting it in on 075 hook length, but possibly on the heavier rig, we might well have a chance. So we'll just see if those roach have settled over the ground bait again. It's quite clear there's definitely no shortage of roach in this place. So I think on, on one of the other pegs, loose feeding caster, there was a bite there. Loose feeding caster at sort of five metres and fish and shell would be very good for them. But I don't know what size they run to, to be fair. Again, the biggest we've had today is probably four or five ounces or so, something like that. But judging from the amount of roach as well, it, you'd like to think there would be quite, quite a few big perch in here or something like that. Again, I think if I came back, I'd probably look to put in a chopworm and cast a line at sort of six or seven metres just at the bottom of the, the near side shelf. That might well be a, a good line to put in for tension, like I say, perch. Right, I've just looked a good fish now. I've waited quite a while for this bite, but I think this one's probably going to break me. It could be a tench, this. I'm only on the single six elastic and 075 up length. Yeah, it's gone. I think that could have been why the peg went dead for a while. Possibly one of those small tents. It should have done me on the hook length, this one. And it has. Right, we'll get, a, we'll get that heavier rig on and see if we can possibly try and get one out on it. Right, so we've got another roach on now after that refeed and because we've probably got about two, three minutes left of the session, we'll probably call this the last one. Again, we've not had any bigger fish over that after that refeed. And even though we've stepped up, we've still been catching these roach, so we'll get him in the net. 
and then we'll take the keep net up the bank and have a look at what we've caught. Another sort of three three ounce roach here at Reedsmere Pond. Every single fish we've had here today has been mink condition, so we'll get him slipped in the net. And like I say, we'll have a look up the bank of what we've had today. Right, so as you can see there, that's our final net of fish. We've probably got between three, three and four pounds, something like that, of nice quality roach. Sort of biggest stamps being about that, and we've had some of small, sort of a couple of ounce. So between probably an ounce, ounce or two, to about four or five ounces, we've done all right today. We've had one little perch as well in there, and one little hybrid that's probably about two ounces as well. And we've lost one or two tench as well that we've um, not really been able to catch on Phil, because they've just pretty much hooked them and they've bolted off and we've not landed them. But we can't really complain today. As I say, it's a brand new venue to me. It's been really interesting to fish this new little place. Lovely little venue to fish. And like I say, just employing a few things that I've used on previous sessions, previous venues that I know work. And like I say, trying to relate it to this place, we've ended up with a decent little net of fish. So we'll get these popped back. So as always from last cast, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on that next episode.